Have you ever felt as if uh, God was unfair sometimes? Is there some time that you've sit, sat down and thought, really God, were you fair when you're doing this and that to me? This one's happening. Were you really fair? You know, there's times that we sit down and we ask ourselves, why are things happening this way? Why, why are things not going my way? Why is it that some people are prospering so much and yet uh, they are lukewarm Christians and I'm not doing the same? And you see somebody has bought a car, somebody has uh, a good life, they have a good family, they have this and that. And uh, they, are, they are this kind of people you say, this is not even a true Christian. Why are they prospering so much while... I am still at the same position. Now, today I want to address that exactly. I want to address if you've ever sat down and asked yourself, it was really God so much fair? If he said he's a just God, then why is this one happening? And I'll speak about this today. Now, uh, we, we see in uh, the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew chapter 20, uh, there's a parable that Jesus gave to his disciples. And uh, this was from a concern where the Apostle Peter had already asked Jesus a question. In uh, Matthew 19, just be, be below there, around I think 19 verse 27, uh, Peter asked Jesus, uh, the Bible says, uh, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we are forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Now this is Peter telling Jesus, we have already done everything which was possible. We have done everything. We have left our families, we have left our jobs, we have left our everything. And we are wondering now, what is there for us? What do we have to achieve? What are we going to achieve from this? And Jesus tells them uh, the answer using a parable. He tells them this parable. He answers this using this parable in uh, Matthew chapter 20 from verse 1. And he says, for the kingdom of heaven is like, now when you hear the, the, the word is like, it means he's comparing the kingdom of heaven uh, in accordance to this parable that he's saying. Is like, and to a man that is an house, householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. So there's this guy who has a vineyard, and then he went out to hire laborers for, for his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. <clears throat> All right. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Now, there's one thing that you have to understand. The vineyard is basically, the vineyard owner is like God. God is the one who owns the vineyard, okay? And the workers, these are different people at different points of their spiritual life or their salvation. Some people have been saved earlier than others, others at the middle, others later, and all that. And the vineyard is the opportunity we have to work for God, okay? Now, these people sitting at the marketplace, marketplace is a, is a place where uh, we have the daily workers hanging around looking for jobs. Like, for example, we have uh, this, maybe these women who uh, wash clothes for people. They just sit somewhere at a, uh, at a corner near a net state and then people can just come and say, hey, come, I want you to go and uh, wash my clothes. I want you to clean my house. Or maybe just some casual laborer somewhere. People who don't have any certificate, they don't have anything to uh, give them a, sub a substantial job. You see, if... if uh, you, you, you have the right certificates, you have the right qualifications, then you should just go and drop your CV and then somebody will call you in a professional way. You have an interview and then you're employed permanently. But these people who work in, who just sit at the marketplace are just casual laborers. People who, uh, I may say for lack of better word, they, they have no qualification, they have no use in the community. They just sit there and anyone can hire them for any kind of job. All right, so they, they cannot command, oh, I need to be paid 2,000 shillings. No, I need to be paid 10,000 shillings. No, they cannot command the pay because they, 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 they have no qualifications. Okay, so these are the kind of people who this vineyard owner went to seek and to, uh, and to get for the work in his vineyard. And we see uh, some workers, uh, let's see from verse 4. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. You see, he's saying, Whatsoever is right, I will give you. Because you don't have a choice. You don't have certificates. You don't have any qualifications. You're not worthy to get this job. But I'll give you what I think is right. Okay? 
Again he went at about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand ye all day idle? Okay? And said unto him, and, and they said unto him, Because no man has hired us, he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right shall you receive. Now you have to understand something here. There are guys who have been hired around 9 a.m. in the morning, others 12 p.m. In, in the in the afternoon, 3 p.m., and then we have 5 p.m. and then 6 p.m. Now look at this. Those people, they have been hired in different intervals. So definitely they expect that the vineyard owner will pay them differently because, you know, they have been hired in different intervals. But there's something that you need to understand. Let's read from verse... Uh, from verse 8. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came, that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. So now he said to his, uh, you know, his manager or something like that, Go and tell those workers to come and start paying them from the last to the first. All right? From the person who came last, 6 p.m., to the one who came 5 p.m., to the one who came 3 p.m., 12 p.m., all through to the one who came first. And then he gave them a penny a day. Now, a penny was uh, was something like, uh, was some, it's, it's like giving a casual laborer 10,000 shillings a day today. Okay, a penny was money which was paid only to the soldiers. It was a, a very high amount of money. Okay, so he's even overpaid them. He's given the the person who came at six p.m. a penny, and then he continues over and over and, uh, and over again. So let's see what uh, happens here. Uh, verse nine. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received a man every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they uh, they should have received more. They likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured, murmured against the good man of the house, saying, The last have, uh, have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden of the heat of the day. But he answered unto uh, uh, and one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst thou not agree with me for a penny? Take that thine ease and go away. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. For it is not lawful for me to do what I will. For is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be the first, and the first shall be the last. For many are called, but few are chosen. Now look at these workers. You've been given, you've been paid actually even more than you uh, deserved. You've been paid, let's say, 10,000 Kenya shillings for a day's work. And then you're complaining because you see another person was also paid the same like you. You see the, the 9 a.m. workers, they didn't expect to be paid the same way with the 6 p.m. workers. Why? Because they thought, uh, we think we deserve more because it came earlier. We think this master is not fair to us because how comes we came earlier, we did all this work, we, we, we were here the whole heat of the day, and these guys come at 6 p.m. just 30 minutes before uh, people are paid and then they want to be paid like us? Now, let me tell you something. God is always fair in whatever he's doing. And this, this parable teaches us how much fair God is. And I want to teach you several uh, uh, lessons that we learn from this parable. Now, lesson number one, we learned that God does not owe us anything. Now, look at this, this uh, vineyard workers. They did not deserve to be employed. That's fr from the first beginning, you see. They did not deserve to be employed. They deserve just to stay there in the marketplace and just wait and wait and wait. And probably if no one hires them, they just go back home uh, having no money. But he hired them, okay? They did not deserve this. This is the same way with us. We don't deserve salvation. We're already sinners. We're already people who uh, have already sinned against God. We're, we, are, we are filthy. We are wrecked. We, are, we, have, all the bad, we have all the reasons that God has, uh, has nothing to do with us. But he saved that nevertheless. So this one explains to us that God does not owe us anything. He has told us, come, I have chosen you. So we should not give him conditions. He can give mercy to whoever he, win, uh, he wants and he can uh, do whatever he wants with the others, okay? So he does not owe us anything. That is lesson number one. Lesson number two is God has already done much more than we deserve. 
these workers did not even deserve uh, even a thousand shillings, but he gave them ten thousand shillings. I'm just uh, uh, calculating or just giving uh, uh, an example. They were paid a penny, which was not even their worth. But then they are here complaining that, hey, you're paid some other people equal like us. Did you even deserve that amount of money that you're paid? The same way with us as Christians. Jesus paid for our sins at the cross. He paid for, he paid for our sins using his own blood. We did not even deserve this. We did not even uh, deserve to, be, uh, uh, to have someone dying for us because it was our mistakes. How can you go and steal and then I come and pay for your, for, for your, for your things that you've stolen? You're the one who's supposed to carry your own cross. But Jesus said, okay, I am going to pay this for you. I'm going to do this for you. I'm not going to be, uh, uh, I'm not going to pay bad by bad. No, I'm going to do as much good as I can to help you out. Even if you did not deserve it. Okay. So God has already done more for us than we deserve. That is lesson number two. Lesson number three is to tell us that God's blessing are not based on how hard we work. But he blesses us because he's a good God, okay? Now, you cannot buy God's blessings. There are people who think that because this vineyard workers, they thought because we came at 9 a.m. in the morning and we have done a lot of work. So this vineyard owner is going to pay us because of the work we have done for him. No, but he was just a good vineyard owner. He just said, okay, let me just give you something to sustain yourself for the day. Let me just help you. Just go and work for me in the farm. I'll pay you even much more than you deserve. He's not basing his payment on the work that they have done. Think about it. The people who came at 6 p.m., did they even deserve a penny? Did they even deserve a shilling, even a coin? Nothing. They deserve nothing. But it was just a good vineyard owner who just wanted to help these people instead of them going back home with nothing just to help them. It's just the same way you see, uh, I always pass in, in the town center so many times and I see people just standing, uh, maybe children selling sweets and they, they, they stop there and they tell me, oh, Keith, please, can you buy my sweets? And I'm like, I don't need to eat sweets. I don't need all these things, but you just tell them, okay, just give me. I'm not buying because I want those sweets. To, uh, I enjoy eating sweets. No, I'm just buying because I want to help. That's the same way with the vineyard owner. He's not giving them a, a job because he wanted some uh, someone to do anything major. Because someone who is coming at 6 p.m. and uh, the work is over by maybe 6.30. What, what necessarily has he done? Nothing. So God's blessings are not based on how hard we work. But he blesses us because he's a good God. So those who think they can buy God's blessings. Those people who tread God's blessings like... Uh, you should give 1,000 shillings to, to the church when you plant a seed and then it will grow. Those kind of lies, they make you to think that you, you, you're trading with God. I give God 1,000, then he gives me 10,000. I give 10,000, then he gives me 100,000. God does not do business. He blesses because he's a good God. Okay. Uh, point number four, lesson number four is never look down upon those 6 p.m. workers. Now, those 6 p.m. workers are those people that you think they did not deserve God's blessings. Now you think because you came at 9 a.m. in the morning, these 6 p.m. workers, they don't deserve to be blessed like you. It's like those people used to think that, uh, how comes this person has really been bad? And then at the last day, just before he died, he's, he, he, he asked God to bless him. He asked God to save him. And right now he's been saved. How, how can it work like that how can god god how can you save this person who has been a sinner all through he's been partying he's doing be doing all the evil things and now you want to have him saved at the last minute it's not fair i've been i've been i've been faithful all my life i've been doing all the things that you have wanted me to do now how comes this person is getting the same payment with me the bible tells us here Never look down upon those 6 p.m. workers because he is a good God and he chooses people according to how he feels and how he wishes. He can choose someone who has been a sinner. Even if Hitler, on the final day, he told God, please forgive me. I know I've killed millions of people. God could have forgiven him. He doesn't look at, at, at the 6 p.m. worker or 3 p.m. worker or 9 p.m. worker or how long you've been saved. You see, there are people, when you go to churches, 
and you hear some pastors or some people who have been uh, saved a long time in the church and they're there uh, bragging themselves with some suspenders and saying yeah you know i've been saved 25 years ago i was saved eh? i'm not like you guys who are just saved the other day i know much about the bible than you you see this is the kind of lesson that you're being taught here don't brag about how much you know brag about how god has been able to save you who was even not worthy to be saved okay Point number five or lesson number five is when we get our eyes off our own blessing and start coveting other people's blessing, resentment towards God begins to sink in. Now, resentment is bitterness, indignation. You know, you start feeling bad. Some, uh, you, you start feeling as if God has treated you uh, uh, unfairly. Okay. Now, God has given you your own blessings. Yes, you came at... <coughs> excuse me you came at nine in the morning you did your work you're supposed to be paid maybe a hundred shillings or 200 shillings that's a normal uh casual labor you know daily wages here here in kenya like maybe 100 to 500 shillings maybe just somebody who came to do some few uh, chores here and there they're supposed to be paid about 500 shillings or 200 or 300 shillings but this vineyard owner has paid you 10,000 shillings and instead of looking at your blessing and saying, oh, I really thank God today. God really, something just happened and I think I was uh, so much blessed. You start looking at someone else's blessings and you start saying, if I came at nine and this person came at six, why are they being paid 10,000 and me 10,000? You want more. Are you seeing the point? So you should not start coveting your neighbor's blessings. If somebody else, maybe uh, in his ministry, he's, he's been called to be a pastor. And as he preaches, you can be able to see, uh, maybe he preaches, he has a big following. Uh, whenever he sets up some message there and people just follow him, they love him and they do this and that. You start feeling and asking God, I wish I was a pastor. I wish I was a singer. I wish I was this and that. But maybe God has called you just to be uh, interceding for other people, just praying in the background. God has called you maybe to preach to your own family. God has called you to preach on people to people on YouTube like I'm doing here right now. Don't compare yourself. Don't compare your blessings. Don't compare where God has positioned you. What if God wanted you to preach to your own family so that they don't go to hell? You preach to your own mother, your father, your sisters, your brothers, maybe your relatives, maybe your neighbors, maybe just your friends. And he called you specifically for that. Why would you be coveting to preach like Maurice Rulo, or preach like Reynard Bonke or preach like maybe a certain person or preach like so no God has called us in different intervals and he wants us to concentrate on the kind of work that is given us and the blessing that is going to give to us and the final point uh, I think this is a final point let me just confirm no there is one more and uh, point number six is focus on what you can give not what you can get Focus on what you can give. This is a lesson that you have learned here. Now, the landowner knew he would get nothing from the 6 p.m. workers, but he still gave. He did not think about, okay, these people will give me almost, almost no fruit. They'll give me almost nothing. But he still gave them. This one gives us a lesson and it tells us, don't focus on what you can get from someone. Don't always focus on what you can receive from a certain maybe nature of people. Don't concentrate on what can I be able to gain from this. From the, if I preach to you, if I go to that church, if I go and, and, and tell you about the good things uh, uh, of God. You see, there, 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 there are churches right now. They think about if, if I get these people to be saved and they come to my church, I'll be gaining this amount of money every month, every, every Sunday. They'll be giving offerings and tithes. No, they are focusing. If these people get saved, I'm going to earn this much. If these people do this, I'm going to... You see, that one is not supposed to be like that. They're supposed to focus on if these people get saved... God is going to receive the glory. And if he, if he decides he will bless me through these people, well and good. If he decides maybe he'll not bless me through these people, God is going to find another way to bless me. Alright? So you should not focus about what am I going to gain. Focus on what am I supposed to give. Okay? And the final point, the final lesson that we can learn from this story is be thankful that God has given you an opportunity or has given you more time to work for him. 
Now, those 9 a.m. workers, they were complaining. We have been scorched in the sun. We have had all this time through the day. <coughs> it was long for us. We have had a lot of hassle during the day. And these 6 p.m. workers also paid the same with us. It's not possible. You should thank God that he has given you more opportunity to work for him. Why? Because those who got saved earlier, before others, you, you see there are people who say, I, I got saved in the year 1990s. I've been, and another person have been saved just the other day in 2020 or maybe uh, just the other day. And they say, oh no, we're going to the same heaven, same reward. This is not fair. Now let me tell you, God has given you more time so that you can work for him. And he's going to balance the equations at the judgment seat of Christ. Those who have worked for him more will receive more rewards in heaven. Forget about what you're getting right here, down here. There are so many other rewards which are going to come in the judgment seat of Christ. At that day, we are going to be paid what we did for him. And that's the time he's going to balance your equations. And you're going to see the clear picture. Because there are people who say, come on, I got saved. My life has been a misery ever, over and over. I, I was watching another guy from, uh, who was uh, uh, from Somalia. I think it's called Mohammed Hajj, if, uh, if I'm not wrong. Maybe you can check uh, him on YouTube. And he was giving his story how he got saved from Somalia. And uh, it was really difficult for him being a Christian there and how he had to travel in a casket all through to go to a different place because it was really difficult for a Christian and people wanted to kill him. And uh, he stood by the faith and uh, he got so much trouble. He was so thin. There is no food. He cannot be able to be seen anywhere around so he cannot walk and... And a lot of trouble. And now he managed to come from Somalia to Kenya and start his own ministry to preach to people. And then he went to Tanzania. And, and you can see the hassle all through. And you ask yourself, if you're this guy, you could ask yourself, how comes I'm getting saved here and I'm facing a lot of problems? And another person in Kenya or another person in the U.S. is getting saved and he's having a good time. He's going to church. There's fellowship. You have some um, uh, some tea and cookies. You eat after every service. And you know, life is really good for this person. But for me, it's really worse. Let me tell you, at the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to be paid for all these things. God is going to balance all these equations. And the people who really face it rough, they're going to get even much more rewards for them not giving up on the work of Christ. Think about the apostles. Almost all the apostles died very uh, weird deaths. Others were stoned to death. Others were uh, 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 beheaded. Others were put in boiling oil. Others were, you know, so many things. You can read the stories about how the disciples died. Do you think those guys are going to get the same reward with you who was just saved and then you sat down and you, you just read your Bible once a month and you don't care about anything? And yes, you're going to heaven. No, God is going to balance these equations. And I think you've been able to understand this. Sorry, the video has been a bit long. I uh, hope you've been blessed with this. And if you don't know the Bible, and if you don't know, uh, let me not even say the Bible, if you don't know the gospel, please get saved because the, the gospel is everything that can get you saved. Now, the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which you received, and wherein you stand by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, this is all about how that Christ died for our sins. How did Jesus die? He shed his blood for our sins. And this is the blood which cleansed you. The Bible says in Romans uh, 3.25, in whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. So we have faith in his blood. No, the faith in the blood of Jesus is what saves us. Unless you believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, you can never be uh, saved. In Ephesians 1.13, it says, uh, it, 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 it tells us something. Let me, let me just read this one for you. It's quite crucial. I've always loved this verse. Ephesians 1.13, uh, just give me a minute, let me check it out. It says, uh, 1 verse 13, it says, In whom you trusted after that you 
heard the word of truth. So you trust after you hear the word of truth. So there's no way you can trust before you hear. So you need a preacher. You need someone to tell you about the gospel. In whom you trusted after that you heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. So this word of truth is the gospel of your salvation. In whom you believed you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Now, the moment you believe in what Jesus did for you, you say, Jesus, I believe that this death was not just in vain. You died for me. You died for my sins. Then you're saved. And the Holy Spirit is sealed inside you, who is the earnest of our inheritance and to the praise of his glory. So the Holy Spirit is the earnest. The earnest is like, is, is like uh, we can say, is, is like our assurance. Our assurance of our inheritance. Because the Holy Spirit is inside us. He will guide us all through. And we are told that in Ephesians 4.30, do not grieve the Holy Spirit in whom you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So the Holy Spirit is sealed inside you unto the day of redemption. The day that you are redeemed of this body. That is the day he will come out. So he is inside you. You can never lose your salvation. Those who tell you you lose your salvation, you can lose it. So God bless you guys. I hope this has been a blessing. You can subscribe to my channel and you can also share to other people. Please give it a thumbs up if uh, it's been good so that uh, YouTube can also share it to other people. God bless you and have a great time.